Significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio is another tiger. That's true. For those of you that didn't know, I'm a Princeton University grad, and joining me today is Valerie Irwin. She is a chef and a consultant. She's a restaurateur. This is exciting. Everything but the samples. Valerie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I, I opened with the Princeton reference, so I do want to sort of start there. Princeton, what was your major? I majored in politics. Majored in politics. How did you go from politics to food? Well, I always loved to cook. I learned mm -hmm. to cook as a child, um, you know, really young. My father taught me to cook, and actually, and I cooked in, in college. I worked in the dining halls, too, but I never really thought of that as food service. Mm -hmm. um, but I did spend a lot of time um, cooking with friends and that, that kind of thing, and learning some international cooking when I was at Princeton, and I really didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. after school and um, and a fr and a friend of mine who's actually a professor at the University of, of uh, Nevada said I think you should do something in food and I was like all right well okay well that's a good stop gap, jo gap job mm -hmm. and so I applied for a job for a job in my favorite restaurant at the time which mm -hmm. was the commissary in Philadelphia oh absolutely wow that is a classic so when you applied for a job at the commissary did you get the job and what did I you got do? I got the job mm -hmm. and I realize now having been in the business for a long time that the commissary was unique in that it so it made very high quality very varied food but on a huge scale which meant mm -hmm. it needed a, a lot of not that skilled labor mm -hmm. and most restaurants are not like that most restaurants say you kind of have to know what you're doing when you come in um, but because the commissary required such so much labor, they would hire somebody with no experience. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if you if you look like you were a reasonable person and you <laughs> come to work, <laughs> also a big if in the restaurant industry, right, then you right. got the job. And um, I have to say, I loved I loved that work. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would. Mm -hmm. I never thought I would take a job where. I was using my hands. I never thought I'd take a job where I was standing up all day, and I can still remember, like after the first couple of days, thinking, "This is great." And I was working in a basement. We were <laughs> in a in a basement kitchen wow. with like thirty other people or something, and mm -hmm. I loved it. And you loved it. Well, passion often drives entrepreneurism. I mean, some some folks would say it's an absolute requirement. So, how did you go? from working in the basement to a job that you loved to owning, starting a restaurant, owning a restaurant, and being well known? I opened, the, I opened my restaurant in 2003. We opened in Germantown, and I lived in Germantown. And one of the things that, there were a couple of things that um, motivated me. One was I got to the point where I felt like there wasn't anybody I really wanted to work for anymore. Mm -hmm. if I, I, and, and also, I didn't feel the the burning need that a lot of people feel to own their own business, to be their own boss. I just wanted to work in a particular kind of place, doing a kind of food, and nobody was doing it. Mm -hmm. And so there was nobody doing it, so I decided I'd do it myself. And I really wanted a nice restaurant in Germantown. I didn't take into, a f into account the fact that if I was working in that restaurant, I still couldn't go there, so that was a little <laughs> bit disappointing. And uh. then um, a couple of years later, we moved to Mount Airy, which was is a l more affluent area and kind of where mo most of my customers came from. Um, okay. The restaurant focused on low country food, which is the coast of South Carolina and Georgia. My grandparents came, um, one set came from South Carolina, one set, set came from Georgia. and. A lot of the food that I made, but not all of it, were things that we, I grew up eating or mm -hmm. at least knowing about. And then um, I kind of had an, uh, I have a real love of the food of the African diaspora, so I did things from the Caribbean and um, West Africa and North Africa. Um, and I think a lot of our notice was because we were making food that other people weren't making. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I never thought of it as that unusual, but that was the comment I got over and over. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's not like just regular steak and chicken. And I'm like, mm -hmm. 
I'm thinking it's, you know, it's just food, but, mm -hmm. but. Ah. Well, well, let's talk about that a little bit more. I mean, you, what was the name of the restaurant and why did you choose that name? The name of the restaurant was Geechee Girl Rice Cafe and Geechees are the descendants of enslaved Africans who live on the coast and islands of South Carolina and Georgia. And as I said, my mother's parents came from Charleston, mm -hmm. my father's parents came from Savannah. And in the low country, uh, rice was a staple crop, uh, not, w not wheat, which mm -hmm. is more of a, um, a cold weather crop. And I grew up eating rice every day. And, and I mean that literally. Every day when I was growing up, we had r rice for dinner. Okay. And uh, so I kind of wanted, I kind of, I wanted to acknowledge the place of rice mm -hmm. in the, the life of the people. So that's mm -hmm. why I, I put it in the rest, in the name of the restaurant, even though people sometimes would think that we were vegetarian or mm -hmm. somehow that we only served rice. <laughs> I, I never could understand that. It's like, do you go to a noodle house and think all they serve is noodles? But <laughs> anyway. But we got past that, and okay. people recognized what a varied menu we had, and um, I don't know what a rich tradition there mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. in the Low Country that we could really pay tribute to. Talk about some of the menu items that people really remarked over on a regular basis. Well, our m our most popular one was shrimp and grits, and. Uh, it, I think that shrimp and grits, is, grits has become a lot more popular around the country oh, these days, and it has a lot of different stuff in it. The one that we did was really simple and um, kind of white and creamy, although it didn't have cream, but it looked like that, and just shrimp, and it didn't have, you know, didn't have mushrooms and scallions and all, all that kind of thing. Um, if I were making it at home, I'd, it would probably have bacon, but I didn't put bacon in it at the mm -hmm. restaurant. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we got, I got stone ground grits that were flown in from, actually they were trucked in, from <laughs> South Carolina. Oh. And that, that, was, that was one big thing that made that dish so wonderful, that we got grits from Anson Mills, uh, which mm -hmm. is a really the premier vendor of organic grain. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what I'd often have people say that they didn't like grits until they tasted our grits, mm -hmm. and uh, so that was that was one. Um, we made a pulled pork, which is a more of a North Carolina thing, but it, it was very similar. The kind of stuff that I mean, it wasn't what you would make at home. You'd go mm -hmm. out and have barbecue, or you mm -hmm. know, bring it home. Yeah. But it was that kind of thing where we smoked the pork in, in the house in house and sauced it with a. Uh, hot s hot sauce and vinegar sauce, mm. and served it with black eyed peas, barbecue black eyed peas. So those were those were two that uh, we were very well known for. You're now talking in the past tense because the restaurant has closed. Entrepreneurially speaking, how did you make that decision to close the restaurant? Your baby, my baby. Your it was. Right, it was. Right, it was. Right. You know what do they say in uh, in writing? You got to kill your darlings. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> it was. You know, we were open for twelve years. Uh, we had a lot of success in a lot of ways. We got um, an awful lot of uh, press coverage, mm -hmm. um, up to including being on the Food Network. But it was a very difficult business model. When I opened in 2003, it, I opened as a BYOB. Was, that was a really viable thing to do in Philadelphia. But as the years went past, it became, it became more and more difficult to operate that way. And liquor licenses in this city are extremely expensive. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I didn't see, it, it didn't, it wasn't a reasonable thing, I felt, for the size restaurant I had to try to acquire a liquor license and stay in that neighborhood. It was something that it would, it would have had to have been sort of wholesale change, mm -hmm. like moving to a, uh, you know, mo moving downtown or moving to West Philadelphia, that kind of, kind of thing. And I just didn't, that wasn't something I was really willing to do at that, at that point. Mm -hmm. So I decided to close the restaurant and just sort of move on. Okay. So you've moved on. Chef and consultant, what does your life look like now? Well, I do some projects on my own. I've uh, done several things with a, a historic house in Germantown, in Germantown uh, Clifton, that has, mm. has done a series of conversations about their kitchens. They have a, 
17th century kitchen and a 20th century kitchen. So I've done food for those. I did a thing this summer with the Philadelphia Jazz Project uh, connected with the Great Migration. So it was a First Friday event and um, each month we honored one state that people migrated from to Philadelphia and started with Virginia oh, wow. and it ended with Florida. And so every month the Jazz Project would have, would uh, get musicians and sometimes they would be from the state, sometimes they would just honor other people who were from the state mm -hmm. and I would come up with food that was relevant and uh, produce that and serve it. Wow, well I'm so sorry, I didn't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> I'll put you on our email <laughs> yeah, list. Put, put me on the email list. Uh, maybe I should ask, what's coming up that I need to know <laughs> about? Because that sounds really cool. So, yeah. and then um, in October, I'm doing another thing with Cliveden that's mm -hmm. based on their 20th century kitchen, which is a 1959 t kitchen. So they're oh. doing uh, a thing, a mid-century cocktail uh, event, and uh, I think it's on October 22nd, but, um, and so they're doing, you know, some, I don't know how many, probably a few mid-century cocktails and maybe uh, wine, mm -hmm. and I'm coming up with mid-century hors d'oeuvres. Oh. Don't ask okay. me what yet, because okay. I don't know. Okay. You, a lot of times you have to tweak things like that because... Mm -hmm. A lot of the stuff that they served in the mid-century, you wouldn't necessarily want to serve right now. Okay. So, um, but I'll come up with some, you know, some kind of hors d'oeuvres that are sort of substantial because it is a cocktail event and you mm -hmm. want people to have things to eat. So that's right. one of the things that um, that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. I uh, work also with a chef at a place called Material Culture, which is a, yes. an event space. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I do some mentoring. I just finished the orientation for SCORE mentoring. So mm -hmm. I, oh, great. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Very important. Because um, yeah. I'm really in interested in that. And, yes. and I, th I am working, although don't hold me to any deadlines, but I really would like to publish a cookbook. Oh. So that's something that okay. I'm, that I'm, I'm working sorry, on. I'm going to hold you to the deadline. Hold me to deadline. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's the business coach in me, so <laughs> I will be following up with okay. you on that. <laughs> that's great. Wow. And in terms of, um, do you do private chef events? or? I do some. Mm -hmm. um, it really depends on what it is. And uh, it, yeah, it really mm -hmm. depends on what it is. So I have done so, um, some events. It's more difficult. If they're big, I have to figure out where a kitchen mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. a very difficult thing to do from a home from mm -hmm. a home kitchen. But I ha do have some partnerships that I've mm -hmm. um, working with. I've worked with a caterer downtown where I worked with her chef mm -hmm. on a menu, and then they produce it. And wow. and and people are always surprised, and I and I tell them like you know even in my restaurant I wasn't cooking all of those right. meals. You realize <laughs> I, you know I was I was developing the menu right, and right. training the people and exactly. making sure it was right. right. So I do, I, do, I do have that, and I have another friend uh, with a, a restaurant kitchen that he lets me work out of sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if it's something not too huge, I would work out of that kitchen. If it's something okay. big, I would probably p partner with somebody else to produce the food. I'm sure some folks are wondering how to get in touch with you. How should they get in touch with you? Well, the easiest way is... Um, if you can follow me on Twitter okay. at Geechee Girl Cafe, ah, or you can Geechee reach Girl me uh, on Facebook at Geechee Girl Rice Cafe. Mm. So those those are the. I mean, I do have email, but that's hard to remember. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> so, so Facebook Twitter, and Twitter, Twitter yeah. and Facebook, and we're also on Instagram at Geechee Girl Cafe. Mm -hmm. um, although I don't check Instagram quite as often. Okay, but Great. Twitter I'm on all the time. Well, Valerie, this has been exciting. I, I, again, am so sorry that I missed the jazz project. Yeah. But Clive did in October. I'm going to put me on the list. I uh, will. I'm gonna follow I you. will. Wow. Very exciting. Well, this, this is great to hear the story of transition. Um, entrepreneur, restaurateur, now doing the consulting, and now also mentoring. So wonderful. Well, thank you. Let's continue to stay in touch. Okay. And, and if you need a... Uh, a taste tester. Okay, I'll, volunteer. I'll keep it in mind. I, I will volunteer. <laughs> right, thank you very significant much. Significant stories, significant samples, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McDeal. Continue to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, 
and YouTube.